When you start RStudio, you will see three major sections, the console, where we'll execute commands, a window with tabs for environment and history, which will display the objects in an R session, and the windows for file plot and package management and access to some help files. The console is where the action happens. If you're familiar with CQP or other command line programs, R will not feel all that different. Being a console, you have a prompt, that little arrow here, where you can enter commands to tell R what to do. R is a programming language, and it's just that the syntax might be different to other languages you may know. In simplest terms, R is a giant calculator. We can sum 2 plus 3, hit enter and get the result. You can use spaces here, R doesn't mind, and throughout this tutorial I'll be using spaces primarily to increase readability of code, but I'll point out where you're not allowed to use spaces. We can also subtract, multiply, divide, or calculate 2 to the power of 3. So these types of operations seem extremely basic, of course, but what makes programming languages like R so powerful is that you can store things in variables and then work with the variables in more complex operations. Variables are like containers or drawers that you put stuff into. Say we want to store the number 2 in a variable A. The assignment operator in R to do so is the minus sign and a right-pointing arrow. And here you can't use spaces between them. This command tells R to put the number 2 into a variable A. We hit enter. No news at the console is generally good news. And what did happen in the background though is that the container A is now an element in our environment and appears in the overview of what is currently stored in our R session. We can also create a container B, in which we assign the value 5. And here I'm typing the name of the container first, in which case I need to switch to assignment operator. The fact that R's assignment operator works in both directions is a pretty neat property of R. We now have two variables, or objects, as R calls them, up here in the environment. We can not only sum numbers, but we can also sum variables. So A plus B instructs R to sum the contents of the variables A and B. Or we can subtract A from B, or multiply them, A times B. And we can, of course, assign the result of a calculation to a new variable D. A times B assigned to D. And we can also copy containers to new containers by assigning A to a new container A2. We can view or print the contents of a variable to the console by typing the name of the variable and hitting enter. Did you notice how I skipped C as a variable name above in the creation of objects? I did that because C is the name of a function, which we'll talk about in the next clip. Generally, names for objects can be anything of any length, provided the name starts in a letter. Also, names must not contain spaces or hyphens, so use periods instead. And you should avoid using names that are also R functions, because this may interfere with the usability of that function. To avoid such problems, many people use a prefix for the objects they create, so we can assign the sum of A and B to an object called mySum, or here with a period, my.sum. If you accidentally overwrite a function, this will not be permanent, of course. Just simply close and restart R will usually fix the problem.